In the last episode, Oda Nobunaga was able to find the justification he needed to storm the capital, seizing Kyoto and installing Ashikaga Yoshiaki as the new shogun. Now, as Nobunaga tightens his grip on the capital, we will see the fallout of his actions as new enemies will arise and lead to the Battle of Anegawa. In 1568, Ora Nobunaga did what had not been done in roughly 230 years. He had conquered the capital and essentially established a new regime. Under the ruse, his aim was to restore power to the Ashikaga shogunate. He had taken up the cause of Ashikaga Yoshiaki. Using his military might, he cut a bloody path to Kyoto and made Yoshiaki his new puppet shogun. Now his real aim laid before him. With the power of the shogunate in his control, and the strength of his own clan and his allies at his back, Nobunaga would set out to unify the land, ending the chaos of the Sengoku Jidai and restoring peace to the nation. Of course, his first steps towards unification would be to secure central Japan, the Kinki region. The only clan that had physically stood in his way on his march to the capital was the Rokaku clan, who had since been crushed and subject to isolation in southern Omi. Below them, by 1569, the Kitabatake clan of Issei province would also fall to the influence of the Oda. However, not all clans decided to stand against the Oda, as when Nobunaga took the capital, the Tsutsui clan of Yamato province, in fear of the Oda, decided to abandon their Miyoshi allies and pledge their loyalty to Nobunaga. In addition, within Yamato province we can also see that Matsunaga Hizahide strategically pledged his allegiance to the Oda as well. If we remember back to episode 20, Hizahide had been a retainer of the Miyoshi, who had eventually split off with them to foster his own power. He would go on to be instrumental in the assassination of Ashikaga Yoshiteru, in 1565. The only other large clan that opposed Nobunaga in the central region was the Miyoshi. When Nobunaga had entered Kyoto, his forces had easily swept all Miyoshi influence out. Yet a larger conflict had arose to the west in Setsu province. Nobunaga's heroic commander, Shibata Katsuie, had engaged a larger Miyoshi force, holding them off and allowing the Oda to firmly secure the capital and the surrounding area without interference. And although hostilities remained between the Oda and Miyoshi, the last threat to Oda rule was none other than the radical Ikoiki warrior monks, who controlled various temples throughout the Kinki region and were largely based at the impenetrable temple fortress of Ishiyama Honganji. Conflict between the Oda and the Ikoiki had become intense, thus much effort was put forth by Nobunaga to eradicate them and their power bases. Yet besides the conflicts which raged across central Japan, things in the capital were somewhat peaceful. Under Nobunaga's iron grip, he worked to establish a new regime that would ensure stability and stand strong in the face of all who stood against him. Of course, his presence completely undermined the power of the new shogun, Yoshiaki, who was supposed to be really the man in charge. Unfortunately, Yoshiaki had quickly realized that he had made the wrong choice when choosing a champion to carry him to the capital, as now it was obvious he was simply meant to be a puppet of the Oda. Nobunaga had skillfully kept his status in an odd form of limbo in aims to keep the power he held over the shogunate and Kyoto making sure that no one truly knew where he lay in the hierarchy of the capital. Yoshiaki, in attempts to formally lower the position of Nobunaga, had offered him the position of Kanrei, the shogunal deputy, a role beneath the shogun, an offer which Nobunaga soundly refused. Even the emperor tried to force Nobunaga into becoming the new Kanrei, yet still he remained free of such titles and status. 
He understood that to accept such a role would make him no different than all the others who had dominated the Shogunate and Kyoto before him, and his ambition was far above theirs. In early 1570, Nobunaga wished to solidify who his allies and enemies were. He pressured Yoshiaki into requesting that all daimyo in the central region come to Kyoto in an act of faith towards the Shogun and the new regime. Any who did not attend would be seen as rivals to the Oda. Surprisingly, Damyo Asakura Yoshikage of Eichizen refused the call. If we remember from the previous episode, Asakura Yoshikage had been Ashikaga Yoshiaki's champion and host for some time before Yoshiaki had eventually lost faith in him and left to join the Oda. Yet now, as Yoshiaki had realized his true role was to be that of Nobunaga's pawn, he may have secretly kept up correspondence with Yoshikage in aims that he may come to liberate the capital and push out the Oda. Nobunaga had definitely been feeling the rise in tension between him and Yoshiaki, and thus began suspecting that Yoshiaki was conspiring with other clans. This refusal by Yoshikage to come to Kyoto brought to light his suspicions, and was all the justification Nobunaga needed to declare the Asakura an enemy of the state. In the spring of 1570, Nobunaga set out for Ichizen at the head of a grand army in aims to conquer the province. The Oda would of course call for the aid of the loyal Tokugawa Ieyasu, who marched with an army of his own towards the Ichizen border. The only clan who stood between Nobunaga's forces and the Asakura were the Azai, who if we remember back from episode 21, had become allies with the Oda due to the marriage between Azai Nagamasa and Oda Nobunaga's sister, Oichi. Nobunaga probably figured that due to their alliance, the Azai would likely allow the Oda and Tokugawa forces free passage through their territory, and at first it appeared as such as the armies began making their way through Upper Omi province. However, there must have been a deep internal conflict brewing within Azai Nagamasa, as his clan had been long-time allies with the Asakura. This new alliance he had made with the Oda definitely served a purpose, yet whichever side he took, he would be dishonorably betraying an ally. Thus, feeling bound to the clan he had been allied to much longer, Nagamasa eventually came to the hard decision to side with the Asakura against Nobunaga. This came just as Oda forces were pushing into Eichizen, when suddenly the Azai began striking out at their rear. Nobunaga was now surrounded by enemies. Luckily for him, with the Tokugawa army at his back, Nobunaga's forces were able to fend off the Azai clan's defection and pull out to make a full retreat without losing massive casualties. However, now knowing that both the Azai and Asakura stood against him, Nobunaga began preparations to wipe them both out. His initial target would be none other than the Azai power base of Odani Castle. By midsummer, Nobunaga and Ieyasu set out again, this time in aims to clear out the treacherous Azai clan first. Wary of another attack from the rear, Nobunaga positioned Shibata Katsuie at the head of a small but elite garrison at Chokoji in Omi province. This extra step of preparation completely paid off, as the Rokaku clan would attempt to seize the opportunity of Nobunaga's absence to retake lost territory, as a Rokaku army numbering around 4,000 would march to lay siege to Chokoji. And although he was severely outnumbered, Katsuie's small garrison held firm, continuously harassing the attackers by launching night raids against Rokaku positions, and eventually dealing so much damage to the attackers that the Rokaku were finally forced to abandon the siege. Afterwards, their reduced numbers would eventually allow the Oda to force the Rokaku into submission. Back on the warfront, as Nobunaga carved a bloody path through Omi, Nagamasa had quickly called the Asakura clan for aid to which Asakura Yoshikage sent out an army under the command of Asakura Kagetake. This combined Azai Asakura army, which numbered roughly around 18,000, immediately moved to meet the Oda, who were in July laying siege to the Azai stronghold of Yokoyama. The Oda Tokugawa army, who numbered around 28,000 strong, quickly turned to face the Azai Asakura forces who were amassing to the north of the Ane River. However, as soon as Nobunaga drew up to face them, the Azai Asakura forces pulled back. Upon seeing his enemies withdrawing, 
Nobunaga ordered the siege of Yokoyama to resume. Yet on the night of July 29th, the Azai Asakura army reappeared and were now heading towards the Oda encampment. Fortunately for Nobunaga, his scouts were able to detect the movements of the Azai Asakura forces. Thus, Nobunaga once again quickly redeployed his forces. On the left side, he sent the Tokugawa army under the command of Ieyasu, who was being aided by one of his finest commanders, Honda Tadakatsu. While the Oda took to the right side, with Nobunaga holding firm alongside notable figures such as Maeda Toshie, Niwa Nagahide, and Hashiba Hideyoshi. Once battle was joined on the morning of the 30th, it became clear that the Asakura portion of the army had taken the left side and the Azai had taken the right. Thus, it was the Tokugawa who were to deal with the Asakura, while Nobunaga had to contend with Nagamasa. Immediately, Nagamasa's charge hit Nobunaga's line hard and fast, and a brutal struggle erupted as the sun began to rise. Although Nobunaga held the advantage of being on the defensive, the aggressiveness of the Azai attack began pushing the Oda forces back, so much so that Nobunaga became concerned that he may need to order a retreat. Yet, things were going the opposite for the Tokugawa, as the Asakura hadn't put up nearly as hard a fight on the left. As Ieyasu began to control the situation on his side of the battlefield, he began sending extra troops over to aid the Oda line, crashing into the flank of the Azai. With the addition of the Tokugawa soldiers, Nobunaga was finally able to hold his ground, and as soon as the Asakura army began to break and rout, Nagamasa realized all hope was fading, and ordered his forces to retreat. Nobunaga had won the battle of Anegawa, yet his forces were severely diminished, so much so that he would not be able to sustain any further push against the Azai power base at Odani. Although the war resumed between the Oda and the Azai Asakura coalition, Nobunaga would be forced to turn his attention elsewhere, as it was now apparent that he was becoming increasingly surrounded by enemies. Several months later, Nagamasa would avenge his defeat at Anegawa by crushing an Oda army at Usayama Castle near Otsu and killing one of Nobunaga's brothers, Oda Nobuharu. However, the war was far from over, and soon, Nobunaga would be able to strike out against the Azai and Asakura once again, in aims to finally finish them off. So, what can we learn? After taking the capital in 1568, Nobunaga set about seizing the central region while at the same time dominating Kyoto politics. This of course angered Shogun Ashikaga Yoshiaki, who quickly came to realize he was simply meant to be Nobunaga's puppet. Eventually, Nobunaga began to suspect that Yoshiaki was secretly in contact with the Asakura clan, and called forth all loyal daimyo to Kyoto in a great show of faith. When the Asakura refused to show, Nobunaga now had the justification he needed to attack. By 1570, he quickly set out to crush the Asakura, being aided by his Tokugawa allies. Yet, Azai Nagamasa would betray him and force a retreat. Months later, Nobunaga would try again, this time working towards the Azai power base of Odani Castle. In retaliation against the Oda, the Azai and Asakura marched against Nobunaga, and their armies would meet at the Battle of Anegawa. Nobunaga would nearly be defeated, yet thanks to Tokugawa Ieyasu, he was able to endure, and the Azai Asakura forces would be forced to retreat. The war between the two factions would continue to rage as Nobunaga's attention would be called away. The Oda were now surrounded by enemies, yet they were still strong in the face of such opposition. In the next episode, tensions continue to rise as Nobunaga is made to deal with his growing number of rivals. Thank you for watching, and don't forget to like, subscribe, and ring that notification bell if you enjoyed this video and found it to be most informative.